हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट रिगार्डिंग एलईडी स्ट्रक्चर्स ओके एलईडी स्ट्रक्चर्स सो इन प्रीवियस क्लास वी डिस्कस अबाउट रिगार्डिंग एलईडी राइट सो एलईडी सर यूज्ड इन मल्टी मोड फाइबर्स राइट लाइट एमिटिंग डायोड्स आर यूज्ड इन मल्टी मोड फाइबर्स राइट एंड दैट कैन प्रोड्यूस द इनकोहरेंट ऑप्टिकल पावर ओके दैट कैन प्रोड्यूस इनकोहरेंट ऑप्टिकल पावर राइट so these leds are having less complex circuitry okay less complex circuitry than the laser diode okay leds require less complex circuitry than the laser diode and they are less expensive compared to the laser diode the leds are of less expensive right so these leds can be used in high speed local area applications okay these leds are used in high speed local area applications right so that thing we discussed in last class right and it is having pn junction right so the from that pn junction the electrons and holes are recombine with each other right from the valence band to sorry connect band connectance band to valence band the electrons are going to recombine with the holes in valence band so at that time the photon will be released that time the photon will be released right so like that the light can be produced from that led clear so that is up to the last class okay now coming to the led structures okay so the widely used configurations okay the widely used led configurations are homo junction and single and double hetero junction okay the widely used led configurations are homo junction and single and double hetero junctions so here the most effective of these structure is double hetero junction okay the mostly widely used the, the structure is double hetero junction okay so this device consists of two different layers here okay this device consists of two different alloy layers okay what is mean by alloy here the metal which is combining with the two or more metals here the metal which is combining with the more two or more metals so that is called as alloy here so here the led structure which is having the two different alloy layers on each side okay so if you see in this figure right so here it is having cross section of the led okay the first figure is having cross section of led here so in both sides we are having metal contact okay here and here right so it is having both sides metal contact right and remaining the regions whatever the layers between between these metal contacts so those are the alloy layers here okay that is combined with the two different sorry two or more alloy layers there okay so here the first half part okay whatever the first half part so that is of here n type okay here it is of p type so here p type and n type materials are going to recombine with each other so at that time we can that is that means that we are injecting the electrons okay we are injecting the electrons at the center of this layer right so from here we are injecting the holes to the center region okay from this side we are entering the we are injecting the electrons right and from this side we are injecting the holes by using these layers okay by using these alloy layers so at that time what will happen ma the holes and electrons will recombine with each other so at that time the photon will be released here so already mentioned it is here so at that time we can, uh, the photon will be released so that is having the energy e equal to h in u right so e equal to h in u so it is uh, it is released by the electrons are going to recombine with these holes so at that time the photon will be released means the led can be pro can produce the light in terms of photon fine so this one is uh, the second figure shows the energy band diagram so here the first section is cross section of led second one is of energy band diagram here now coming to the third one 
so that shows the variations in refractive indexes okay the variations in refractive indices this third figure shows the variations in refractive indices right so in case of led the electrons and holes are recombined with each other at that time the photon will be released fine next next one is in this led okay in this light emitting diode the band gap differences are there and the differences in indexes okay the band gap differences and in, and the differences in, in the indices leads to both high efficiency and high radiance okay the band gap differences and the differences in indices that leads to both high efficiency and high radiance actually the led must have here the high radiance output okay that is the brightness here radiance is nothing but the brightness the led must have high radiance output okay that is the brightness and that should have fast emission response time okay the led must have fast emission response time and it should have high quantum efficiency okay the led must have high quantum efficiency so to produce the light in the optical fiber so by that we can send the data easily right with the quality fine next so just now we told na the band gap differences and the differences in the indices leads to both high efficiency and high radiance therefore this led structure is used to provide the most efficient incoherent sources for applications of optical fiber okay this structure is used to provide the most efficient incoherent sources for applications of optical fiber right next the basic led configuration okay the two basic led configurations are used for optical fibers are first one sc led that is surface emitting led okay surface emitting leds that are also called as burrs okay that are also called as burrs and also called as front emitters okay surface emitting it is also called as burrs and another is it is also called as front emitters and second one is edge emitting leds so there are two types of configurations over here first one is surface emitting led second one is edge emitting led now coming to the first one that is of surface emitting led so in this surface emitting led uh, the plane of the active light emitting region the plane of active light emitting region is oriented perpendicularly to the axis of fiber okay in case of surface emitting led the plane of active light emitting region is oriented perpendicularly to the axis of the fiber so if you see in this figure right so it is having the active region okay it is having the active region that is layer that is placed perpendicularly to the axis of this optical fiber okay it is placed perpendicularly to the axis of fiber right so in case of surface emitting led the light emitting active region that is oriented perpendicularly to the axis of the fiber fine so in this led the well is etched here okay in this led the well is etched here so this one is of the well right so in this the optical fiber is placed here okay why because to get the light into the optical fiber okay here the well is etched into the form into this led right in this well the optical fiber is placed here fine so why because the light which uh, which has to be coupled into the optical fiber okay the light has to be coupled into the optical fiber so hence it is placed in the well here and that is cemented here okay so by this the light which can be passed through the optical fiber next in this surface emitting led the internal absorption is less okay in this led 
the internal absorption is less and the reflection coefficient is high okay in this led the internal absorption is less and the reflection coefficient is high hence the forward radiance is good here okay because of this internal absorption is less and the reflection coefficient is high the forward radi radiance is high that is brightness is high here next here the circular active region okay the circular active area in practical uh, the surface emitter is normally of 50 micrometers in diameter okay the circular area it is of 50 micrometers in diameter and up to 2.5 micrometer thickness okay the diameter is 50 micrometers and up to 2.5 micrometers is thickness next the emission from this active area okay the emission from this active area okay that is of having 120 degrees half power beam width okay that is having 120 degrees half power beam width so the total hpbw that is of the half power beam width of it is of 120 degrees okay this pattern from this surface emitting led is called as lambertian pattern okay whatever the pattern coming from this led right that is called as the lambertian pattern so in this pattern the source is equally bright when viewed from any direction okay in this pattern the source is equally bright when viewed from any direction so because the total half power beam width here 120 degrees fine next the total power coupled into the multi-mode step index fiber okay the total power coupled into the multi-mode step index fiber that can be given by this relation okay pc is equal to pi of 1 minus r into a into rd of n a whole square okay pc is equal to pi of 1 minus r capital a rd into n a whole square so where pc indicates the total power coupled into the fiber next r is the fractional reflection coefficient capital a is emission area of source okay next rd is the radiance of source radiance is nothing but here brightness right and numerical aperture okay and a indicates the numerical aperture so this one is the relation for the power coupled into the multi-mode step index fiber fine so that is regarding surface emitting led so it is one of the type in two led configurations okay the two led configurations are of first one is surface emitting led second one is of edge emitting leds so that is regarding led structure so in next class we discuss about regarding edge emitting led okay thank you all thank you